Hey everyone, Allison from the DNA Learning Center here with another DNA LC short. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how DNA methylation is one of the epigenetic marks that controls which genes get expressed in particular cells. Today, I'm going to talk a bit more about the enzymes that actually methylate DNA, called DNA methyltransferases. Let's start with a quick recap of the introduction to DNA methylation video. We have here a methyl group, CH3, which gets added to a cytosine in DNA, forming 5-methyl cytosine. In mammals, DNA methylation usually occurs in the context of CG dinucleotides, often written CPG, so a cytosine in the DNA followed by a guanine. In many cases, the role of this methylation is to control expression of genes. Methylation in promoter regions prevents transcription of the neighboring gene, which prevents the protein encoded by that gene from being made. This allows cells to conserve energy by only making the proteins they actually need. I'm focusing on 5-methylcytosine in these videos, and in particular the role of DNA methylation and DNA methyltransferases in mammals. Just know that there are different systems in other organisms, and in bacteria especially, there are different roles for DNA methylation. I'm not going into those here for the sake of time. Let's move on to a quick overview of how DNA methyltransferases work. As the name suggests, DNA methyltransferases are enzymes, remember enzymes usually end in ASE, that transfer methyl groups from S adenosylmethionine, often called SAM or ADOMET, onto DNA. There are three known active DNA methyltransferases in mammals, and we often see them divided into two groups, a maintenance DNA methyltransferase, called DNMT1, and two de novo DNA methyltransferases, called DNMT3A and DNMT3B. Let's talk first about maintenance methylation. So if we have a double-stranded DNA molecule here, with methylated CPGs, the dark circles, on both strands, and the cell replicates this DNA. The strands will separate, and each will be copied. Each new double-stranded DNA molecule will consist of one strand of the original DNA and one strand of newly synthesized, unmethylated DNA. Remember semi-conservative DNA replication? I'm not going into those details of DNA replication here, and remember that this would be happening on the scale of whole chromatids. I'm just using a small segment as an example. Anyway. Now we have two copies of our DNA, and each is what we call hemimethylated. One strand methylated, one strand not methylated. DNMT1 is recruited to newly synthesized DNA. We don't know exactly how this recruitment works, but the N-terminal part of the protein interacts with other proteins that help bring DNMT1 to the location of newly replicated DNA. The structure of the catalytic domain of DNMT1 allows it to make contact with the methylated cytosine on one strand, as well as the unmethylated cytosine that is paired with the G in the methylated CPG. This is the cytosine on the newly synthesized DNA that needs to be methylated. DNMT1 then adds a methyl group to the cytosine and moves on. In this way, DNMT1 methylates the newly replicated DNA so that it matches the original double-stranded DNA. In other words, it maintains the pattern of DNA methylation after DNA replication, hence the name maintenance methyltransferase or maintenance methylation. So daughter cells will inherit DNA that has the same methylation pattern as their parent cell. Okay, but how does that pattern come to be there in the first place, and how does it change in different cell types? Now we're talking about de novo DNA methyltransferases. As their name suggests, they set up a new pattern of methylation. There are two active de novo DNA methyltransferases in mammals, DNMT3A and DNMT3B. Scientists still don't totally understand how these two enzymes set up the unique patterns of DNA methylation observed in different cells, but we do know that the structure of these proteins gives them the ability to bind to DNA, with a preference for CG dinucleotides as part of the bound sequence. The two de novo DNA methyltransferases have some overlapping targets, and some targets that are specific to each enzyme. There are probably multiple interacting factors that lead to the differences in how DNMT3A and DNMT3B target DNA sequences, such as interaction with other proteins, interaction with chromatin with specific modifications, and interaction with non-coding RNAs. There also seem to be some intrinsic preference for different DNA sequences based on the slightly different structure of each of the two proteins. That these two de novo DNA methyltransferases have different sequence preferences is also reflected in what happens when they are mutated. DNMT3B mutations are associated with ICF syndrome, which stands for Immunodeficiency Centromeric Instability Facial Anomalies Syndrome. This is a very rare autosomal recessive syndrome 
which can be caused by mutations in DNMT3B or one of several other genes. People with ICF syndrome have hypomethylation, less methylation than expected. And in particular, they have hypomethylated pericentromeric satellites, bits of non-coding repetitive DNA near the centromere. Germline mutations in DNMT3A, on the other hand, are associated with tatten braun raman syndrome, also known as DNMT3A overgrowth syndrome. This syndrome has different patterns of altered methylation than ICF syndrome and different phenotypes. Somatic mutations are mutations that aren't inherited, but rather happen in a cell in someone's body, which then gets passed on to that cell's daughter cells. Somatic mutations in DNMT3A have been identified in myelodysplastic syndrome, MDS, and some forms of acute myeloid leukemia, AML. In these neoplasms, there are many regions of hypomethylation, as well as regions of hypermethylation, more methylation than expected. The differences between these syndromes and cancers reflects how the loss of one or the other de novo DNA methyltransferase leads to loss of methylation in particular regions of DNA. These two enzymes act differently. So overall, DNMT3A and DNMT3B set up a pattern of methylation during development, and the pattern is changed when cells differentiate into different cell types. DNMT1 maintains those patterns, and DNMT3A and DNMT3B may also help out a bit with maintenance methylation. Then that cycle continues. DNMT3A and DNMT3B set up new patterns as needed. DNMT1 maintains. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to DNA methyltransferases. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future DNALC short content. Be sure to check out our other videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media so you don't miss anything. Bye!